afternoon, good afternoon. Hello, watcher, watcher, washer. Kim Traveler, uh, welcome to a, uh, in, as I said, uh, we are doing everything impromptu right now uh, because of the uh, schedule and demands and so on. So it is what it is. Uh, this is a part eight of the, um, uh, it's, it's actually the first addendum, if you will, of the Cesar Milstein story on monoclonal antibodies. Uh, what I do is I go through and I'll read the uh, content, break it up into a few different shows. And then if appropriate, there may be a couple of addendums afterwards. Um, in this case, uh, just spending a couple of minutes taking a quick gander at a few things, because uh, I had a few minutes to do some gandering, I guess, uh, we just just bumped into an individual who I'm not sure if he's mentioned in the article or not, uh, but we will see. But I think it's an important person historically or anyways, it, sometimes it's not necessarily that the individual is the most groundbreaking thing. Uh, no offense um, at all meant by that, um, but sometimes it can help direct attention to uh, a topic which is of uh, underrated, underestimated importance. I think that there is much to be learned uh, about the the events of the last 50, 75 years, which led us to where we are and the decision to even use the medicines which were used for the COVID out, uh, COVID-19 event by learning more and resurrecting the history of a company called Centocor, C-E-N-T-O-C-O-R. The very fact that one of their, uh, they had several founders, but one of them was Hilary Kaprowski, in and of itself, uh, is a, uh, uh, the alarms are going off. Emergency lights are flashing. The, uh, the fact that there's no Wikipedia page on it is shocking, uh, although no surprise. That's what we would have expected to see if there's something there that perhaps we shouldn't be knowing about. Also interesting is that it doesn't even say on Hillary Kaprowski's Wikipedia page that he had anything to do with this company. How is it that you can be one of the co-founders of a company? It doesn't even make your Wikipedia page. And this is not just, uh, you know, uh, uh, a hot dog stand. This is a very important company with respect to the history of monoclonal antibodies and biotech overall. So um, I, yesterday I put out uh, a... Uh, uh, I know it's a hypothesis, but I speculated, I pondered if this article, the Cesar Milstein article that we're reading, which mentions Hillary Kaprowski's key role in effectively taking the patents uh, that Cesar Milstein uh, should have had and the British government should have had. Um, and it also mentions Centocor via a uh, one of their co-founders who also took intellectual property and commercialize the products that Cesar Milstein was working on, the monoclonal antibody uh, and the cell lines. But did it mention in that article that Hillary Kaprowski, a key person with respect to intellectual property of monoclonal antibodies, was with Centacor, with that Centacor? And I went through, and no, it doesn't. Again, it's sort of like saying, uh, imagine if, if you will, um, Maybe this isn't the best example because this relationship is so well understood. But imagine if if it was a little bit less understood, okay? Imagine if you talk about a particular subject and then in one chapter you mention Bill Gates, that the subject is connected to Bill Gates. And then in another chapter you say it's mentioned to Microsoft. Now, we all know Bill Gates. This is so it's well known, so it's not the best example. It was related to Microsoft and founder. We know that's fake history, but whatever the case. But to put it separately like that is now in this case, it may not be that bad because it's understood that they're related. But if most people don't know that one is the founder of the other one, or at least generally understood popular culture understands one to be the founder of the other one, it's somewhat disingenuous. Just a hint. Doesn't smell right. Doesn't smell right to me. So. It's just another thing that, okay, now I'm, I'm even more interested. I'm just continuously interested. 
So uh, one of the, and again, it's a collection of people that founded this company, all right? Probably you could say five or six people, very similar to the company Cetus Corporation, C-E-T-U-S, also effectively had five or six co-founders, right? Um, and But the Centacore had about five or six, and Kabrowski was one of them, and uh, of course, they'll probably at one point all argue with each other. Who's the real? Who's the real? Uh, uh, Jim uh, Slim Shady here. Um, so we're going to read the uh, uh, the Wikipedia page, and then we're going to read the New York Times obituary of someone named Hubert Shoemaker. S C H O E M A K M A K E R. Often seen as Doctor Hubert uh, J P Shoemaker or Hubert Jacob Paul Shoemaker. And uh, again, uh, tragedies befall many good people. This doesn't necessarily mean that if someone passes young, there is a conspiracy. Sometimes it's just an unlucky run in with a tree limb. It happens. Um, but in this case, it does seem odd that there are some people in the biotech industry that just live well into their old age. And then a whole bunch that just don't quite make it that long. It, it, it really... I don't see many people dying in this industry at age 60. They're all, it's all like 40s and 50s, sometimes even 30s, or once you make it, or you're making it all the way to 90 or, or 100. It's really interesting. Um, I don't, can't quite explain that. Nonetheless, um, I think that this article and uh, his will provide a little bit of insight uh, as a addendum uh, perhaps with for some things which I don't believe the Cesar Milstein article is going to offer. So with that said, let's just get down to it. Uh, Wikipedia page. Hubert Jacob Paul Shoemaker was born March 23rd, 1950, and he died January 1st of 2006. He was a Dutch biotechnologist. He was a co-founder and the president of one of America's first biotechnology companies, Centacore. Of course, <laughs> Yet there's no Wikipedia page on Centacore, uh, which was founded in 1979 for the commercializing of monoclonal antibodies. In 1999, he founded uh, Neuronix, N-E-U-R-O-N-Y-X, Incorporated, for the development, uh, for the manufacture of stem cells and the development of stem cell therapies. Early life and education. Uh, Hubert Schumacher was born in uh, Deventer, Netherlands. He attended St. Bernard's School in Deventer and uh, Canisius uh, College in uh, uh, Nijmegen, N-I-G-M-E-G-E-N. In 1969, he moved to the United States to attend the University of Notre Dame, where he majored in chemistry, graduated in May 1972, soon after he married Anne uh, Postorino. He then earned a doctorate in biochemistry in 1975 from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, supervised by Paul Schimmel, his doctoral research was an investigation of the structure and function relationships of transfer RNAs, tRNAs, and their complexities. Career. After declining postdoctoral research positions with Stanley Cohen and Klaus Weber, Shoemaker chose to work as a research scientist in industry. Interesting that Stanley Cohen uh, at Stanford uh, was one of uh, the top how would you say, peers of Joshua Lederberg. And Stanley Cohen still alive. For what it's worth, Lederberg isn't. Uh, Shoemaker chose to work as a... Uh, Stanley Cohen recently was sued for like $28 million and he paid all of it. Uh, Shoemaker chose to work as a research scientist in industry. He cho His choice was influenced by the severe disabilities suffered by his first daughter, Maureen, who was born with uh, lysencephaly and needed specialized care. Uh, let's learn a little bit more about that, if you will. Uh, lysencephaly, meaning smooth brain, is a set of rare brain disorders whereby the whole or parts of the surface of the brain appear smooth is caused by defective neuronal migration during the 12th and 24th weeks of gestation, resulting from lack of development of brain folds, gyri, and grooves. Um, children with uh, uh, lysencephaly generally have significant developmental delays, 
But these vary greatly from child to child, depending upon the degree of brain malformation and seizure control. Uh, you can learn more about that if you if you will. So his daughter needed specialized care. This inspired Shoemaker to become involved in commercial biotechnology. In 1976, Shoemaker joined Corning Medical, a Boston-based division of Corning Glass Works. At Corning, Shoemaker rapidly progressed from being a specialist in immunoassay developments for diagnostics to heading research and development. Among his achievements at the company was devising effective diagnostic kits for thyroid disorders. In 1979, Shoemaker became involved in the founding of Centacor with a former Corning medical colleague, Ted Allen, Ted Allen excuse me, and the bio-entrepreneur Michael Wall, uh, with whom he had some dealings with at Corning. And it's this Michael Wall who worked uh, with uh, Cesar Milstein, as described in the in that article, that's why I was curious. Like, interesting. There's like two routes now to Centacor and Kaprowski from Milstein. And once you see two connections, even if they appear unrelated, oftentimes you start to find a lot more. So, entrepreneur Michael Wall, who he had some dealings with at Corning, inspired by the work of Hillary Kaprowski. <laughs> who developed some of the earliest monoclonal antibodies against tumor antigens and influenza viral antigens. The objective of Centacor was to commercialize monoclonal antibodies for diagnostics and therapeutics. And that is what uh, uh, Cesar Milstein was effectively unable to do successfully. He needed help of other people. And it's interesting that the person, so the company that he worked with to commercialize it was Michael Wall, who was wound up uh, being connected with Centacor. And the person that stole the patents from Cesar Milstein was Hilary Kaprowski, who was also a co-founder of Centacor. Hmm. 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 <laughs> I don't know what to say. In 1980, a Shoemaker joined Centacor and soon after became its first official chief executive officer. From the start, Centacor decided to fill its product pipeline through partnerships with research institutions and marketing alliances. Central to this policy was Shoemaker's ability to network and the company's decision to design diagnostic kits so that were compatible with existing diagnostic systems. Under Shoemaker's leadership, Centacor rapidly grew into a profitable diagnostic business. By 1985, the company had revenues of approximately $50 million. In part, this success was built upon the swift approval the company won for two of its tests. The first was for gastrointestinal cancer was for gastrointestinal cancer test, and the other was for hepatitis B. Between 1983 and 1986, Centacor introduced three other diagnostic tests to the market, one for ovarian cancer, the first diagnostic test available for that disease anywhere, one for breast cancer, and one for uh, colorectal cancer. Despite the company's success on the diagnostic front, Shoemaker was plunged in 1992 into efforts to save the company from bankruptcy with its first therapeutic, uh, Centoxin, C-E-N-T-O-X-I-N, a drug designed to treat septic shock, failed to win FDA approval. Hmm, interesting. I know that toxic shock was actually the, uh, the big thing that Michael Osterholm of Minnesota worked on. Uh, tried to earlier see if Osterholm had any connection to Centacor, and he didn't. Uh, in part, the crisis had come about as a result of the company's executives trying to go it alone in developing the drug. What saved the company was a return to the policy of collaboration. Learning from its mistakes with Centoxin in, 19, in December of 1994, Centacor gained marketing approval for Reopro, R-E-O-P-R-O, a monoclonal antibody drug for cardiovascular disease. The first therapeutic to ever receive simultaneous Europe, United States and European approvals and the second monoclonal antibody to ever win approval as a drug, Repro, uh, marked uh, a milestone for both Centacor and for monoclonal antibody therapeutics. Repro was to be followed in August of 1998 by the approval of Centacor's Remicade, R-E-M-I-C-A-D-E, a drug to treat autoimmune disorders like Crohn's disease and rheumatoid arthritis. This product here, this Remi Remicade, uh, it's it's 
more technical name is infliximab. And again, it may be, as Jonathan Cui said yesterday, always stands for monoclonal antibodies. It's a chimeric monoclonal antibody. So it's actually, it's a combination of animal and human antibody. Interesting. Uh, it's a whole antibody, but it's chimeric. This stuff is relatively unusual. Um, obviously, this would not happen naturally. Um, interesting, interesting stuff. <clears throat> uh, and has come up other times as well. There's There was a, uh, a movement, or I should say a bunch of scientists out of Japan, hmm, to see if they could use that drug to treat COVID-19 as a monoclonal antibody. And I happen to wonder, and again, this would be a question I would pose to a uh, regular guy or Sam Eagle. I wonder if pursuing chimeric antibodies would be a clever way to get around patenting issues, which are relative to the human antibodies. Hmm, I just wonder about that. Anyways, after selling Centicor to Johnson & Johnson in 1999, Shoemaker went on to form uh, Neuronix, a biotech company focused in developing cellular therapies. After Shoemaker died in 2006, the company continued was continued by his wife, Ann Faulkner Shoemaker. Initial work focused on using stem cells taken from adult bone marrow to help regenerate heart tissue damage during heart attacks. Later, the company turned direction to looking at the development of a treatment for incision wounds in women following breast cancer reconstruction surgery. By the way, that is a, uh, no pun intended here, because it's a, it's a terrible thing. Uh, a, a growing industry, and that is, uh, or I should say, uh, diseases, where women who've had breast cancer implants, many of them are having cancers right now because they are leaking. I don't know that what chemicals are used. I don't understand uh, the surface materials. It's just not something I have a lot of familiarity with. Uh, but uh, I have a connection, uh, friend of a friend, of, uh, if you will, and the, the topic came up, and uh, now they are going to have to deal with not only the removal, but a potential lifetime of dealing with that. Something that doesn't make the news. Uh, the company was later changed its name to Garnett Biotherapeutics, despite promising clinical results and raising more than $55 million in venture capital funding the company was unable to continue. Shoemaker was diagnosed in 1994 with a form of brain cancer, uh, med, uh, medulloblastoma, and he died, well, he 12 years later, January 1st, uh, 2006, at age 55. Uh, it's, uh, so the, the mistakes uh, going back to 1994 is around the same time that he was diagnosed with brain cancer. So with that said, uh, if you look at the other founders, I think Michael Wall's fine. Uh, Kaprowski lived, I think, well into his 90s. Uh, there was a, uh, I looked up a couple of other names. I don't know. I'm not saying that there's any conspiracy here or not, but it's interesting how uh, relevant this company it is. And uh, as much as we're learning from the Cesar Milstein article, it's always interesting what it doesn't say. What does it not say? Sometimes you can't say everything in every article. That's ridiculous, right? But when you start to see a pattern between Wikipedia pages and articles of just not saying certain things, and also one must ask, why the heck is that article even up? It's interesting. And it goes back to 12 years ago. As a matter of fact, the date that that article was written, perfectly time, is perfectly aligns in 2012, with the Centicor Genentech case that was being handled in a, a, with a with the top legal advisor of Les Weinstein. I don't know which way that protein dispute went. Something to look into. But it's almost as if as that was getting more visibility, well, now it's a good time to talk about, well, Kaprowski didn't really steal those patents. It was just sort of a sloppy misunderstanding by Milstein that allowed countless dollars of 
intellectual property investment by the British government to go bye-bye. And then it didn't really go to the Americans either, even though Wistar is in the United States. Just happened to go to a guy that escaped the Nazis just in time and worked for the Rockefeller Institute for four years in Brazil and then came straight to the U.S. and had his cell cultures handled by people at Memorial Sloan Kettering and was connected with the Special Virus Cancer Program. It just so happens to work out like that. Um, anyways, uh, with that said, I'm just going to do comments real quickly. I uh, hope you guys are all doing well. Um, as a non-biologist, no comment. Uh, past actuals, 100% news. <laughs> Uh, uh, Huffman, how you doing? Uh, a girl I mentioned that had to get them removed because they were just started to go uh, hard in places. They, you know, it's so terrible. Well, it's it it's unfortunate. It's sad that our society has that women have felt compelled to get those. It's sad that uh, perhaps some men pressured him. It's bad that our we embraced media and allowed media to make it seem as though that was appropriate. Um, it's it's just unfortunate. Just just be yourself. Just be yourself. It's so uh, uh, it's 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 just a real. It's really sad. Um. Uh. Let's see here. Uh, Japan had a council of 100 for vaccine research. I still don't know if it's a thing. Um, I don't know. There is a lot of weird connections with Japan. And I'm just going to see if there's any other uh, quick questions here. I think we should start even further back. Oh, we do. Oh, we do. Uh, washer. Washer. <laughs> uh, we go pretty far back. Uh, we go back all the way to World War II and... Uh, Really, I mean, the area that I really start to get into is the 1918 flu, although people could say it goes back further than that. Although sometime in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, I think that's when they started to become aware that there was disease potential and things that couldn't be seen. These things are described as viruses. I suspect it's uh, it's basically xenotropic. Uh, it, it's effectively taking at that time, unseeable genetic material and transplanting it between different animals and noticing that things went crazy. Wow. Who would have thought if you take inflow straight from the plasma, genetic messages from one type of animal and inject it into another animal, there might be a little bit of cancer. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. But of course... It was uh, all heavily supported both by biowarfare, by genetic research, by uh, curing diseases, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So as I want to leave this video up on my main platform, I'm not saying any, I don't have any position in this video about jab, safety, or efficiency. Not saying anything about it. No comment in this video. Um, so was there anything else to uh, add to that? Oh, yes. Uh, speaking of Japan, I just uploaded a uh, Dr. Sina Bavari of you, Samrid video. Uh, it was already on YouTube. It was posted by another fellow all the way back in 2014. It's a December 2nd, 2014 presentation that Bavari gave in Japan. So why in the middle of that big, big, big Ebola outbreak? Everyone's on high alert. Is Bavari going to Japan to give a one and a hour and 15 minute presentation? Because he bumped into someone at a restaurant and he says this. It's a really bizarre thing. There's something really, really bizarre there uh, because he's not necessarily a fellow that, that flies around the world and gives lots of presentations. Um, anyways. Uh, I did post that, and there's a couple of clips in there that we're going to review at some time later. So with that said, the, this addendum is over. Just wanted to put out there this information on uh, Hubert uh, Jacob Paul Shoemaker. And uh, again, it seems like only the good die young. Makes me wonder why I'm still alive. Maybe I'm not good enough. <laughs> 
Um, and I'm not saying he's good, but I just wonder. I just wonder. Anyways, guys, thank you. Take care. God bless. Um, uh, what's that phrase? The most important thing is to keep the most important thing the most important thing. <laughs>